What is going on everybody, it's Stas here, welcome back to another video. So in this video, we're going to be talking about the top couple of stocks and ETFs that I'm watching for the second week of December in 2018. So for those of you guys that are new to my channel, my name is Stas, and I make videos dealing with swing trading, day trading, long-term investing, and my personal philosophies and strategies when it comes down to investing and trading in the stock market. So for those of you guys that want to learn more about that, feel free to drop a like, leave a comment and subscribe and follow me on Instagram as well as on Twitter and join our Discord group chat as well as our Facebook group. All of those are linked down below in the description box. And if you guys want to be in contact with me and about 320 other investors and traders, join that Discord group chat guys. We're talking about trading. We're talking about investing, stocks, news, strategies on a day-to-day -day basis. So if you guys want to be in the community on that platform, again, I highly suggest you join that. And again, all those are linked down below in the description box. So today, guys, like I said, I want to talk about some ETFs and some stocks that I'm watching for this upcoming week. And for those of you guys that have been paying attention to the markets you should know that we've been in an absolute slaughter over the past couple of trading days. The Dow Jones, the S&P 500, and the NASDAQ have been having ridiculous swings. The Dow Jones was down 700 points one day. It flies up 700 the next. You know, one day in particular... You know, the Dow Jones shot down about 700 points and then had a 700 point, uh, you know, push back up and it rebounded like in a total of 1500 points in a matter of one day. You know, the markets have been absolutely ridiculous. So before we do talk about some stocks, ETFs, let's just take a look at what the overall indexes are telling us in terms of the technical analysis. And let me just quickly clear this drawing set so we can get a better understanding with some fresh trend lines that I'm going to draw out for you guys right here. So for those of you guys that have been following my content for a while, you know that I talk about the overall markets in the beginning of every single trading update video. So we can get a better understanding of my thinking throughout trading and you know I like seeing the direction of the overall market before deciding what I'm going to be trading because you know a lot of people know this already a lot of people do the same thing but you know I trade a bunch of market ETFs that rely on what direction the market is pushing to you know really just decide what those ETFs are going to be doing. So for those of you guys that don't know what I'm saying is that, you know, I trade uh, ETFs that go up in price when the markets are going up in price. And I'm also trading ETFs that go up in price when the markets are going down in price. This is a very good way to make money both ways in terms of when the markets are going up in price and when the markets are going down in price. But before we do talk about those particular ETFs, let's just take a look at what this Dow Jones index is telling us. So we can very clearly draw out a support here at about $24,500. And this is a support level that we've been talking about over the past couple of weeks in terms of the Dow. And, you know, the S&P has a very similar support level, right? It's been holding above this particular support at 2630. And what that is telling us, guys, is that the markets are holding above that certain level, right? It, it may seem very obvious, but the fact that the markets, the Dow, the S&P have not broken below these critical support levels is a very good sign. But if we take a look at these points right here in terms of the Dow Jones, we notice that it's making lower highs. The high here at 27K, next high at about 26,200. The next high is at about 25,800. So the lower highs is signal signifying that the Dow is downtrending in price, but the reason that it's not fully downtrending in price quite yet is because we haven't made a lower low here due to the fact that we've been holding above that support level. So this is why I think that support level at 25 or 24,500 is super important and a very critical level for the Dow Jones because let me tell you why. If we do break below here this upcoming week, we're going to be heading heavier into the correction. Uh, territory right but if we don't break here right and we bounce back up here that's going to be a good sign that the Dow Jones is slowly recovering and will test 
the resistance at the top of this channel, which may be around $25,500 at that point. And we've been talking about this over the past couple of videos, guys. Once the Dow Jones, if the Dow Jones does break below here, that's not a very good sign. And that's just a continuation of the correction that we've been in since the early, uh, you know, since early October. So S&P 500, guys, very similar. Like I said, we're holding that support here and we're trading more of, of in a, you know, more in a horizontal pattern as compared to the Dow Jones because we saw the Dow Jones it's making lower highs this one's really been you know not really making lower highs you know it did make a lower high here from this previous at about 2930 but since this high we've been able to pretty much come back up to it the past three times right 2820 you know we topped here at about 2800 a little bit shy of that high but it was in the same vicinity the same ballpark as the previous high at about 28.20. So, you know, let me just quickly clear this very quickly for you guys. I don't know why it's doing that. But uh, where is it? Clear drawing set. And we can see, you know, this is more of in a horizontal channel than the Dow Jones. So, like I mentioned, I've been talking about this in the Discord chat. Uh, you know, I could, I, I, I don't see it, you know, impossible for us to have a bounce back day, maybe tomorrow and Tuesday before we do end up heading back down in price. Because I do think there's a lot of more uncertainty. There's obviously a ton of uncertainty in the markets. There's a lot of doubts in the markets and stock market investors do not like doubts and uncertainties, which is why I personally think the market's going to continue to push down. But I think, guys, we're going to have possibly a bounce back day tomorrow and the day after, potentially, because we've sold off pretty heavily in terms of the overall markets in the past couple of days so watch out for that bounce back and again as always just keep an eye on the futures keep an eye on stocks pre-market hours what is going on you know that's going to really show you and paint a picture of what could potentially happen that day so nasdaq guys had a very very bad day pretty much we popped above the 180 simple moving average we got a glimpse of relief in terms of the nasdaq but again you know we had a terrible day this past friday and you know the entire past week and we shot back down broke below that 180 sma and you know we tried to bounce up above it again but we got rejected and now we're pretty much breaking this little support here that we do have at about 6640 and uh you know all things are showing that all signs are showing that the nasdaq is continuing Continuing this downtrending pattern, you know, it's making lower highs, uh, you know, it's making lower lows. And the next stop, in my personal opinion, guys, the next support we got to keep an eye on for this NASDAQ is at about $6,500. So if we do have another bad red day, you know, a bad couple of red days this upcoming week, you know, that is going to push the NASDAQ down below that level and it's going to continue the lower low pattern, higher or lower high pattern that it's been on over the past couple of weeks. So now that we got a better idea of what's going on in the overall stock market in terms of the three major indexes, the Dow, the NASDAQ, and the S&P, you know, I'm going to talk about some ETFs, mostly ETFs, guys, because again, I'm not really trading stocks right now, swing trading stocks. I am looking at potentially day trading them, right? But I found more success trading ETFs over the past two months since we've been in this correction territory. So let's just talk talk a little bit about some ETFs today, guys, and see what I personally see potential in. So natural gas is at a very interesting point right now, uh, you know, in my personal opinion, based off of these technicals. So we're in a wedge pattern right here. We had a good report, which pushed up this natural gas uh, future all the way up to the top of this resistance line right here. And we're slowly seeing a red candlestick starting to form under this resistance resistance point. So what this is telling me is that this could potentially be either a a breakout spot for the natural gas futures which will push it out of this channel which would be a very bullish move or to b this could be a rejection point for natural gas, which would end up pushing it down here and it would continue this pattern of lower highs. And if that ends up happening, guys, we're going to be trading DGAS, ticker symbol DG. A Z and D gas guys obviously it went through that reverse split it's been getting hammered over the past couple of weeks but I do see some potential bounce back uh you know potential 
in this ETF if we are able to get rejected at the top of that channel in terms of natural gas. And again, if we break out of this, very bullish move in my opinion, and that's going to be a very good sign for you guys. And you know, if we can draw out a couple of resistance points here for you guys, we're pretty much at one at about 155 right now. If we're able to break out of that, next one would be at around 175 following about $190. So there is room for you guys to run if we are able to break out of the top of that wedge in terms of these uh you know these natural gas futures. So D gas and U gas just like every single week guys, these are at the top of my list for this upcoming week. And another pair of ETFs that I've been trading a bunch actually have been Gush and Drip. And for those of you guys that don't know, these are, you know, oil-based ETFs and they trade based upon XOP. And XOP is an oil ETF and whenever this one's going up in price, you know, Gush is going up in price, but whenever XOP is going down in price, Drip is going up in price. So we noticed the big sell-off in XOP this past week which was very good for Drip. Drip had a ridiculous day this past Friday. I traded it. I made about 6-7% on one trade with Drip. I actually traded Gush as well. Ended up taking a 1% loss into that uh, in that ETF before putting my money into Drip and making that 7%. But, you know, judging off this chart here on XOP, we noticed that uh, it got rejected here at the 50 SMA, which was very good for Drip, and it pushed down in price here. Here. And we noticed that it's making lower highs, making lower lows. So the fact that it's getting rejected by this 50 simple moving average is a very good sign for drip. And what I'm going to be paying attention to, guys, to see what I want to play in terms of either gush or drip this upcoming week is I want to see if it's able to continue this pattern and if it's able to make a lower low here guys potentially back down to around the 30 range right we could end up playing gush on a bounce back play from down here at around 30 dollars back up to that 50 simple moving average resistance so keep an eye on this guys very very important so based off these technicals i do believe drip does have some more potential maybe back up to 1275 which was a resistance point in the past do Due to the pattern being here a little bit above this low at about $30.77. So if this continues the pattern, we might break below here, break this little uh, support at around $30.77, which again would be great for drip. And then at that point, guys, if we do see a little bit of a curl back up, the uh, 50 simple moving average will be a resistance point, which in turn will be able to play gush on that bounce back play so let me show you guys what drips looking like very quickly here you know we are at about twelve dollars we pulled back bounced on the 50 sma at about ten dollars that's where i ended up calling it out on friday and we see the resistance here like i said a little bit earlier at about 1275 so i do see potential from about maybe twelve dollars back up to here before we do pull back and, and uh, potentially play gush on that little bounce back play. So guys, I'm mainly focusing on drip and gush, you guys and D gas in terms of these inverse ETFs for this upcoming week. Another one that had a pretty solid day was JNUG. And JNUG is one that I called out uh, about a couple of videos ago. And this one was up about 60 cents, 8% this past week. And what do we notice? Oh, uh, not this past week on Friday, but what do we notice on JNUG's chart? We notice that it's at a resistance point at the 180 SMA, which has been a strong resistance in the past. So the fact that we are here, guys, opens my eyes up to the inverse to JNUG, which is JDST. And, uh, you know, if we do get rejected here, guys, which is very possible since, again, it's been a resistance in the past and the RSI levels are showing that it's overbought, I think JDST will end up being a phenomenal play this upcoming week, at least for a little bounce back, maybe from this support at about 68 back up to potentially like $74, which does offer about a 10%, I would say, 9-10% potential for profit. So for those of you guys that don't know, JDST and JNUG, they're gold-based ETFs, and they trade based upon slash 
GC. So if Slash GC is continuing this bullish shine that it's showing, it's obviously going to be good for JNUG. But we do expect a pullback because, again, we don't want to see a stock ETF, commodity, future, whatever we're watching continuously pushing up without a pullback the whole idea is to continuously trade the uptrend and you know sell at the top or at least try to and then play the inverse on the pullback so that's the strategy i'm i'm pretty much coming in with here with uh these gold futures and uh these gold based etfs i would love to see potentially a pullback back to around this level at around 12 30 because that's a previous resistance which is now a new support so based off the technicals guys that would really make sense and would be a very good opportunity in my personal opinion for jdst so gold futures natural gas uh you know futures all those etfs as well as the oil etfs uh gush and uh drip are the main combos that i'm watching heading into monday tuesday this whole entire week pretty much and another stock this is a weed stock i've been talking about this a lot that i'm watching this week due to it being crazy on fire is cron ticker symbol c-r-o-n and we talked about this it got bought out well it didn't get bought out but i think 45 percent i think altria bought 45 percent of the company for about 2.2 billion dollars i talked about this on friday it was all over the news very solid, you know, uh, very solid acquisition by Altria, in my personal opinion, and a very good sign for the marijuana industry as a whole. So this could potentially send Cron even possibly back up to highs of about $15. But what do we notice here, guys, is Cron actually shot up to $14.50 pre-market hours, and it had a solid pullback. So that opened up a pretty solid margin of profit. And in my opinion, guys, if we're able to hold above this, uh, you know, this previous resistance at about $11, possibly $12, that could become a new support level, meaning that we could potentially get in here at a better buy point and ride it back up to previous resistances at that point being around $14. So I'm watching Cron very closely, guys. Again, it's all over the news. There's a ton of hype behind this one right now. And when there's a ton of hype in the stock market, it tends to you know shoot up stocks individual stocks up 40 50 60 percent and that's exactly what ended up happening to cron guys it was literally up 45 percent at one point uh you know from the previous day once that news got announced and you know grabbing some of that profit is very attainable in my personal opinion we just have to keep an eye on it wait for the opportunity to open to us and be very very smart about the trade so uh, you know, obviously, guys, I'm going to be watching, uh, you know, the other market ETFs like TVIX, you know, TQQQ, right? These are all ones that I watch every single day. And in the state of the, mar of the market that we're currently in, these are very smart to keep an eye on and potentially play in my personal opinion. So, you know, if the markets are showing another heavy sell-off tomorrow, pre-market hours, I'm probably going to be trading TVIX because this one does go up in price, you know, <coughs> when the markets are selling off. But if we do see a uh, you know a potential bounce back up this week, which again you know I think is very possible due to the big sell off that we've had, you know TQQQ does show potential for maybe you know around this level the support that we're at around the forty dollar range back up to the one eighty simple moving average at around fifty dollars, which could be a very solid trade in my personal opinion. But from the technicals, guys, you know based off what we're looking at here. TQQ could push down to maybe the high 30s if it continues this lower low pattern. But again, you know, this is all going to be based on what the market is showing. You know, if the markets are down, let's say the Dow's down two, three hundred points pre-market, excuse me, pre-market hours tomorrow, you know, you know, it could be a good opportunity to potentially hop into this one. For the bounce back play, if you do think it could shoot back up to the 180 simple moving average or hop into TVIX for a quick little day trade, you know, that's what I'm personally going to be doing tomorrow. So, you know, just to sum things up, guys, 
you guys, D Gas, JDST, J Nug, Drip, and you know, Gush are all in pretty, you know, pretty favorable situations to trade right now based off of the technicals. In my personal opinion, I'm gonna be watching them very closely as well as TVIX. TQQQ, you know, SQQQ, QQQ, these are all market ETFs that play based on what the market is doing, whether it's up or down, you can make money trading these ETFs, and obviously guys, if we do have a strong bounce back tomorrow in the markets, I'm going to be looking to potentially day trade some large cap stocks like Apple, Facebook, Amazon, Google, you know, all of these ones that have been getting, that have been getting hit and crushed over the past couple of weeks, so I hope you guys enjoyed this video if you did feel free to drop a like leave a comment and subscribe follow me on instagram and twitter and join our discord group as well as our facebook group all of those are linked down below in the description box i'll catch you guys in the next video have a great rest of your weekend peace out